Hi, today we're going to start looking at algebraic expressions, introducing some of the concepts that we work with in algebra. We're going to start off by looking at variables and what variables are. So when we're working with algebra, now this is a term that I've actually already used in some of the lessons, lessons that we've had before, but I've never really explained what the term variable actually means. So when we talk about variables, we're talking about the letters that we're working with in algebra. When we have letters in maths, they can take any value, okay? They can, their values can change depending on the situation, depending on the context that we're working with. And sometimes they can have, if you have, for instance, the letter X, it can have the value 5 in one situation. It might have the value 10 in another situation. It, the value can vary, and that's why we call it a variable, as opposed to a number like the number 3, which has a constant value. It has a fixed value that can't change. The number three is always going to be worth three. It's never going to be worth anything else. Whereas the letter X can be worth different values. It can represent different amounts in different situations. So that's what we're talking about when we are referring to, that's what we're referring to when we're talking about variables. Okay, so now we're going to go and look at constructing algebraic expressions. So there's some language that you need to understand when we are working with constructing algebraic expressions. The first thing we're going to look at is the term sum. Okay, so in maths, the term sum means the result of addition. Okay, so when you add values, then we refer to the result, the answer you get as the sum of those values. The next thing is difference. Now in maths, the word difference means subtraction. It's the result of subtraction. So if I want to find the difference between two values, I'm going to take the bigger one minus the smaller one, and that will give me the difference between those two values. Next, we've got product. The product in maths is the result of multiplication. So if I want to find the product of two values, I'm going to multiply them together. I'm going to times them together. And then the last one is the quotient. If I want to find the quotient of two values, that is the result of division. So I need to divide them, one divide one by the other. Okay, so that is just four terms that you need to be familiar with when we are working with maths in general, but particularly in the section that we're going to be doing now. Okay. So now we're going to practice writing things that you've been given descriptions for in words as algebraic expressions. I'm going to do the first one with you, and then I want you to see if you can do the rest of them by yourself, and then we'll go through them after that. So the first one, it says the difference between 5 and x, and they're telling us that 5 is greater than x. Now the reason they have to tell us that is because, as I said, when you're finding the difference, you need to take the bigger one minus the smaller one, which means you kind of need to know which one is the bigger one. So they've told us that 5 is greater than x, so we're going to take 5 and subtract x from it. So we're going to have 5 minus x. So that's what you should have for that one over there. So now I'm going to give you two minutes to complete this table where you're going to take all of these descriptions that have been written in words over here and write them as algebraic expressions over there. So you have two minutes to complete this table.
Okay, so let's have a look at how you did with that table. So the next one we've got is the product of P and Q. So first, product means multiplication. So that means we need to multiply P and Q together. Now you might have said P times Q with a time sign, but in algebra we don't need to do that. We can just write PQ because it can't be confused with anything else. It's not like if I write 2, 3, meaning 2 times 3, it looks like 23. I can't do that with normal numbers, but with variables, I don't need to write the time sign. So the standard way of writing in algebra is to leave out the time sign in between variables. The next one is the sum of x and y. So here sum means addition, so I'm going to add x and y. So it's going to be x plus y. The next one I've got is the quotient if x is divided by 2. Okay, so we're going to take x and we're going to divide it by 2. So here I've written it as a fraction. You can also write it as x divided by 2 like that as well. Okay, but generally we write division in the form of a fraction like this. So that's something you kind of need to get used to, is writing division as a fraction like that. The next one we've got is 4 is increased by x. So when we're talking about increasing an amount, then that means addition again. So we're going to take 4 and increase it by x, so we're going to say 4 plus x. Then I've got p is decreased by n, so if increased means addition, decreased must mean subtraction. So we're going to subtract n from p. So we have p minus n. Then we've got 7 is multiplied by c, so 7 times c is just 7c. Again, we don't need to write the time sign because it can't be confused with anything else, so we just write it as 7c. Next one is y is squared, so that's just going to be y squared like that. Then we've got the cube of b, so b cubed like that. Then I've got x times 4. Now I could write x times 4 in that order, but when we are writing in algebra, we write the number first and then variables. So it's going to be 4 times x like that. So 4x. And then I've got x is multiplied by 5 and decreased by y. So first we'll do this over here. x is multiplied by 5, so that's going to be 5x. And then decreased by y, we're going to subtract y. Okay, then the last one, the square of a is multiplied by b. So we've got a squared is multiplied by b. Again, I don't need to write the time sign, so it's just going to be a squared b, like that. So that's what you should have got for those values in that table. Okay, now let's go and look at terms. Okay, when we are working with algebraic expressions, expressions are made up of what we call terms, and terms are separated by pluses and minuses. So here's an example of an algebraic expression. We've got a plus b plus c. Okay, these over here are terms and we can separate the terms or identify the terms by putting term lines in like this and that helps us to see the terms. Now the term lines will always go in front of a plus or a minus. If you have brackets in your expression, so say I have something like this, a plus 2 a minus b plus c. Okay, now these brackets hold it together as one term. So this over here is still one term. If I have a plus or a minus inside brackets, I don't count it in terms of separating my terms. Okay, I can't separate terms inside my brackets when I'm looking at the expression as a whole. So over here my term lines are going to go in front of this a, or in front of this plus after the a, and in front of this plus after the brackets. So this over here is all one term. And the plus is part of the terms. Like over here, this is positive a. You can't see the plus, but it is there. You, it's just invisible. 
this is plus b and this is plus c the term includes the plus okay or if it was minuses it would include the minus as well same thing over here i've got positive a here i've got plus 2a minus b that's all one term and then plus c okay let's have a look at another example if i have 3x x minus y minus 2a plus b x plus y plus 4b okay so in this example over here i'm going to find all the, the pluses or minuses that are not inside brackets so over here this minus is inside brackets so it doesn't count in terms of separating my terms this one is not inside brackets so i'm going to put a term line over there in front of the minus then over here i've got all one term until I get to this plus which is not inside brackets and I put my term line over there so I've got three terms in this expression over here now what happens if we have something like this okay so now I've got a fraction now just like brackets fractions also hold things together as a term okay so here I've got a plus inside that inside my fraction here but just like the pluses or minus inside brackets I don't look at it when I'm um, separating my expression into terms that does not count as a separator okay so over here I would put my term line in front of that plus and in front of that minus so I've got a term over here I've got a term over here and I've got a term over here so when you are looking at the terms in an expression, you find all the pluses or minuses that are not inside brackets and that are not inside fractions. And so all of those pluses and minuses that aren't inside brackets or inside fractions, they separate or they split your expression up into terms. The plus or minus always belongs to the term after it. Okay, so over here, the term line will always go in front of a plus or minus it won't go after the plus or minus the plus or minus belongs to the term that follows it okay it's part of that term right so now let's have a look at an example so in this example you've got an expression 2x plus 3 times x minus 5 in brackets minus x plus y over x x squared plus xy in brackets plus 4 times x times y squared minus 3 times in brackets x minus 2y and in more brackets 3x plus 4y okay so this is quite a long and involved expression all we have to do is determine how many terms there are in this expression okay so let's have a look at how we would do this so first of all let's take the expression and write it down so we've got 2x plus 3x minus 5 minus x plus y over x x squared plus xy plus 4 times x times y squared minus 3 times x minus 2y times 3x plus 4y okay it's so long that i can barely even fit it on the line and what we need to do now is we need to determine how many terms there are in this expression so what I'm looking for is pluses or minuses that are not inside brackets and that are not inside fractions. So the first plus I get to over here is this one. It's not inside brackets or a fraction. So that is going to be separating terms. So I can put my term line over there. The next one I have is this minus. It's inside brackets. So I'm going to ignore it and move on to the next minus that I have over here. That is separating my term over there. Then I've got a couple of pluses over here inside my fraction, but I'm not going to worry about them because they do not separate terms in the whole expression. Then I've got a plus over here, which I'm going to be using to separate my terms. Then I've got time signs. Now, the way it's been written, those time signs could look like they might potentially be separating terms in your, your expression, but they're not because time signs don't. Okay, only pluses or minuses do. So I'm going to ignore them. And I'm going to move on to my minus over here. It's not inside brackets. It's not inside a fraction. So it is separating terms. And so I put my, my line over there in front of it. And then I've got minus and plus inside the brackets over here. But I'm going to ignore them because they're inside brackets. So over here I have got one term over there. 
I've got a second term over there, a third term over there, a fourth term over there, and a fifth term over there. So there are five terms altogether. Okay, now in this expression, there are terms inside the brackets. There are terms inside the fractions. Okay, so if we are looking at the contents of this set of brackets, I can say that there are two terms inside there. But when we're looking at the expression as a whole, we're not looking at the terms inside the brackets, we're looking at the whole expression, then this is one term. And this is one term over here. So you, you can look at the terms individually inside those brackets and inside the fractions like that, but that's only when you're looking at that specifically. If you're looking at the expression as a whole, then a set of brackets or anything like that all counts as one term. A fraction counts as one term and so on. Okay, so now you're going to do some yourself where you are going to take this table and you're going to look at each of the expressions in this table and you're going to determine how many terms there are in each of those expressions and just fill in the number of terms of there. And I'm going to give you two minutes to complete this table. Okay, so let's see how you got on with this table over here. So first, in the first expression, we have got 2a plus 3b minus 4c plus 5d. So we need to determine how many terms there are in that. So I'm going to go and put in term lines. So I've got a term line over there, and I'm going to put a term line in front of this minus over here, and another one in front of the plus over there. So that means I've got one, two, three, four terms all together. Right, in the next one, I have got a term line in front of this plus over here and another one in front of the minus over there. So I've got in this one, one, two, three terms. Right, in the next expression, it gets a little bit more complicated. You've got time signs you should be careful of. They do not separate terms. So the only term line I'm going to put in in this one is in front of this plus over here. So that means I have one, two terms in this expression over here. The next one, again, the divide sign does not separate terms. So the only term line I'm going to have is in front of my minus over here. So I've got two terms in this one as well. Next one, I've got brackets now. The plus is inside the brackets I'm going to ignore. So I'm going to have a term line in front of this minus and no other term lines. So I've got, again, two terms over here. 
Right, in this one, I have got a time sign over there. The only plus or minus that I have is inside brackets. So I'm not going to be putting in any term lines in this one. So this expression only has one term. Next one, I've got a plus over here, so I can put a term line in front of it because it's not inside brackets and it's not in a fraction. And then I've got a minus over here, so I can put a term line in front of that because again, it's not inside brackets and it's not in a fraction. I can't use this plus because it's inside brackets. And then that means that I have one, two, three terms in that expression. And then the last one, we've got a plus over here that I'm going to put a term line in front of. The 3y is separated from this whole fraction. There is a plus inside there, but I don't count pluses or minuses that are inside bracket or fractions or brackets, which is also a bracket in the fraction. Okay, so I've got over here two terms in that expression. So that's what you should have got for that table. Okay, the next thing we're going to be looking at is multiplication. Okay, so now when we are working in algebra with multiplication, there are a couple of steps you need to follow. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to multiply the numbers together. Okay, that's your first step and you write down the product of the numbers first. Okay, then you're going to take all of the like variables. In other words, if there are a's that you're multiplying, you multiply all the a's together and you write them as a power. Okay, so you combine all the A's into one power, you combine all the B's into one power, you combine all the C's into one power, and so on. And then we write them in alphabetical order. Okay, so when we are doing multiplication with in algebra, we do the numbers first, and then we do the variables in alphabetical order. That's just kind of like good manners and maths is to write it in, alphabetic, in alphabetical order like that. Okay, so let's have a look at our first example over here. So in this example, we've got 3 times A times 5, or 3 times A times C times 5 times B times A times C times C. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to multiply our numbers together. So out of all of that, my numbers are the 3 and the 5. Okay, so that's what I need to multiply together first. So 3 times 5 is 15. Okay, so first, 3 times 5 is 15. Then I look at my, my variables, and I'm going to look at all of the same variables together in alphabetical order. So the first variable I'm going to look at is A. So I'm going to look, I've got an A over here, and I've got an A over there. There are two A's that I'm multiplying together, and when I multiply A together with another A, that gives me A squared. So I've got 15 A squared. Then I'm going to look at the next letter in alphabetical order, which in this case is B. So over here, I've only got one B, so it's just going to be B, like that. And then I've got my C's. I've got one, two, three c's that are being multiplied together. When we multiply three c's together, that is c to the power of three. So you should get 15 a squared b c cubed for that example. Okay, so that's what you're going to be doing with all the examples in this table over here. Okay, so you're going to take, take each of these expressions that have been given to you, and you're going to write them in as a simplified version, just like we did in the example we just did over here. So you're going to multiply together, take out all the time signs, and you're going to write, make sure that the variables are in alphabetical order, make sure that the numbers are written first. And if you have the same variables that are being multiplied together, you combine them into powers. And then something that I didn't mention earlier is that if your number is one, then if you've got one that is being multiplied by variables, then you don't write the one, you just write the variables. Okay, so I'm going to give you two minutes to complete this table.
Okay, so let's go through each of those. So for the first one, we have 5 times x. 5 times x can just be written as 5x by taking out the time sign. The next one, we've got 2 times a times b. Again, I'm just going to take out the time signs over there. There's, there is only one number, there's only one a, there's only one b. So I, can't, I don't need to do anything else except for taking out the time signs. So 2, a, b. Then I've got 1 times x times x. Now this is something that we actually haven't really talked about much. When you've got a 1 in front of a variable, you don't need to write that 1. Okay? So 1 times x times x is just going to be x squared. Okay? So when you've got a 1 in front, you don't need to write that 1. Next one, I've got 4 times 3 is 12. Then I've got, the in alphabetical order, the first variable is a. There's only one, so it's just going to be a. And then I've got two b's that are being multiplied together, so that's going to be b squared. So that should give you 12ab squared. The next one, we've got, for our numbers, 2 times 3 is 6. For our first variable in alphabetical order is b. I've got two of them, so it's b squared. And then I've got C's, and I've got three of them, so it's going to be C cubed. Next, for my numbers, I'm first going to simplify what I've got inside those brackets. Inside the brackets, I've got 5 minus 4, which is 1. There are no other numbers, so the only number is 1. But just like I said over here, when, I've, when my number is 1, and it's being written with variables after it, I don't need to write the one. So I'm just going to leave that one out because I have got variables over here that I'm still going to be writing. Then in alphabetical order, the first variable I'm going to deal with is A. There's only one A, so it just stays A. Then I've got B. Again, there's only one B, so it stays B. And then I've got three C's that are being multiplied together, so that's going to be C cubed. Okay. Then the next one, I've got XY times YZ. Okay, so here, even though there's no time signs in between here, remember when we don't have any time signs or any signs between letters, it means times. So this means x times y times y times z. Just, go, just like we had over there, even though you don't have the, the extra time signs over there, it still means that. Okay, so we don't need to treat it any differently to what we were doing over there. We're again going to look. In this case, I don't have any numbers to worry about. That means that it's 1. Okay, my number is 1. I'm just not writing it. But if I go on to my letters, then the first letter I have in alphabetical order is x. Okay, there's only one x over here, so it's just x to the power of 1. I don't need to write the 1. Then I've got two y's that are being multiplied together, so it's y squared. And then I've got 1z that is being multiplied, so it's just z. Okay, so you should have got x, y squared, z for that one. And then the last one, we've got y times xy times 2 times, in brackets, 1 plus 2 times xyz. Okay, so first, my numbers. Bed mass says I have to do what's inside the brackets first. So 1 plus 2 is 3, times 2 is 6. Okay, so my number is 6 over there. Then I'm going to go on to my variables in alphabetical order. So the first is x, so I've got an x over here and another x over there. So it's x times x is x squared. Then I've got y's, 1, 2, 3 y's being multiplied together. So I've got y cubed, and then I've got just 1z over here. So it's going to just be z over there. So you should have got x or 6x x squared y cubed z for that last one. Now, I just want to quickly uh, mention that when we are working in algebra, we tend to use this curly x just so it doesn't look like a time sign. Okay, so if you have been wondering why I've been using this curly x all the time, that is the reason that we tend to use the curly x. Not everybody does it, so you might see sometimes in other books or on the internet or whatever that they just use a normal x, but I prefer to use the, the curly x just so it doesn't end up looking like a time sign, and that's kind of the standard way that we do it in South Africa as well. Okay, so that is how you do multiplication when you're working with uh, algebra. 
Okay, so that is just an introduction to algebra. Now that we've learned the concepts in this lesson, it's important to practice, practice, practice. If you haven't already got the worksheet that goes with this video, you can find it by clicking on the link in the description below. The worksheet comes with an extra exercise full of questions for you to work on to master the concepts covered in this lesson. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button so that others can benefit from it too. Also be sure to subscribe so that you can easily find my other lessons and hit the bell so that you will get notified about lessons as I upload them.